I grew up in WA and basketball is the big, you know, Paralympic sport over there, it still is. And so that was the first one that I tried. And I remember trying it three or four times and I was terrible. I was absolutely terrible. The idea of having to catch, throw, uh, navigate, like, like the court, the chair, all of it was just completely beyond me. And so the man who coached it was a man named Frank Ponta and it's a small community, so he, he coached quite a few of the sports. And he basically pulled me to the side and I'm paraphrasing, but this is like 100% the vibe, basically said, you're terrible at this, you're not an asset to this team whatsoever, um, do you want to try something else? And he had a track chair in the storage room, so I jumped in this race chair in the parking lot of this basketball stadium and absolutely fell in love with it. I started working with Madison when she was 14, so a very long time ago, and it was brought to my attention she was coming over to Sydney for um, uh, some games over here, and I was told to come along and see what I thought. And yeah, we just had to get her in a chair that fitted her, and yeah, she had a lot of potential. I think even as someone who'd, who'd been in a chair most of their lives, switching to, to a race chair is completely different. It's, it's not a piece of mobility equipment, it's definitely a piece of sporting equipment and it's, it's entirely different. So I think a lot of wheelchair racing that you don't necessarily notice while watching it is how much skill and technique kind of goes into the push. It's, it's less so a power sport and more a technical sport. We're a little bit different. Um, I'm extremely competitive and she's not, but yeah, it's just, just different ways of getting the best out of her and, and getting her to win and getting the best out of her in terms of what she can do and being the best person and the best athlete. So it's not all about winning sometimes. Um, uh, it kills me to say that, but definitely, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we set goals for in a race and it's not necessarily winning the actual race. There's different components that we have goals for. It has to be how I have to get ready to race is so regimented because I can't force myself to to want to win a race. Like I, I don't have that in me. And and for a long time there, I thought that the sport wasn't going to be for me because or sport in general wasn't going to be my thing because specifically because of that. And I think everybody that I'd seen around me was this fierce competitive person. And I think, you know, Louise summarises all of that. I think if you think of what an athlete is, it's Louise Sauvage. And, and she's basically everything on the track that I'm not. Like, I think it adds a personality and that mental approach to, to racing where, where polar opposites. For me, it was definitely wanting to see how far I could go and be the absolute best version of myself. And I'm, I'm in a, a career where if I bring the best version of myself, physically, mentally, emotionally, if I can put all those pieces together, I could potentially on that day, on that track or on that road, be the best in the world. I love how much we turn up for sport in Australia. It's one of the best things. And I think that one of the things with sport, I find it is its impact on community, right? You, you recognize it and you, you try and do everything you can with your platform to have the best possible impact, but you don't always see it. But for Com Games, I think we really did. The amount of kids that we saw after that marathon who, who you know, I, I think if you talk about the, the disability side, who'd, who'd never seen someone who looked like them celebrate in the way that we were celebrating our athletes just as athletes, I think you, it would have been one of the first occasions that young kids with disabilities saw people that looked like them celebrate as humans, which I know the bar is on the floor in that statement. But that's the reality of it. I think our entire identity is wrapped up in disability and that's not fair. You don't get to be an entire human with that stigma associated with everything you do. And Com Games was one of the first times that you would have not seen that. You would have just seen athletes as athletes, people with disabilities in the green and gold racing for Australia and that was it. And the fact that we had so many kids out there on the road for that marathon, getting to see it firsthand and the amount of kids that would have seen that on their screens is absolutely unreal. One of the biggest, I think, challenges as an Olympic or a Paralympic athlete is your whole life is in a four year cycle. And so I think with the postponement and the potential cancellation that was gonna happen, it isn't just, you know, oh, this year's been thrown into a bit of jeopardy. It's kind of four years of your entire identity is being thrown into jeopardy. I think the minute Rio wrapped up, you now became an athlete training for Tokyo. And, and as an athlete, you're not just there when you're training. I think every decision you make on and off the track is about how do I be the best version of myself come Tokyo. And the mental flexibility you have to have to be okay with whatever's gonna be thrown at you is I think a hard thing to learn without the pressure to need to do it. But we've all kind of been able to learn how to do that because we've had to. And I think, you know, going forward, we're gonna have just a really resilient group of humans, I think on a pretty extreme scale now. Having people with disabilities in a spotlight does 
two, does one thing in two steps, and the first step is representation. That person isn't necessarily there in an entirely tokenistic way, they do get to be an entire person in that space, but through representation, that person is still there representing every person with a disability. The next step is authentic visibility, and that's what we're leaning towards in sport, where I think in Australia we're, we're nearly there in sport, where our athletes with disabilities are just that, they're athletes with disabilities, but they're athletes first and foremost. And in that space, you get to be an entire person. You're, you're an athlete, you're a person with a disability, you are a, whatever else you choose to be in that space. And you get to see all of that. And it's a, this is a similar burden that we put on women in every industry, but women in sports specifically, you know, that's what we're referred to as, is women in sport, we're not athletes. And, and if we have more visibility in those spaces, we're giving permission for young kids with disabilities to be an entire person. They're not seeing a person with a disability being treated well in a spotlight. They're just seeing an entire person that looks like them. And that is the space that I want to take up and create. And I think for me, if I could do one thing with this platform, it's create the, the space for anyone but kids with disabilities to be the most authentic versions of themselves and not be held to any ridiculous stigmas that set before him. That was such a long answer, I'm so sorry. I, I, I can that, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't laugh and have a chat with you. <laughs>